Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number 56. And if you want to download this workbook, Business 210 Chapter 9 Second Workbook, click on the link below the video. And in the last three videos, we did hypothesis testing. All three examples, one tail right, one tail left, and two tail when sigma is known. This video is just a quick summary. So you have all of the formulas and functions in one summary video. All right, uh, one tail to the right upper test. That means we're testing on the upper end. We have all of our data here. We have to calculate standard error before we can do the test statistic. Standard error is always going to be when sigma is known. Sigma divided by square root of our n. That gives us the standard deviation for the sampling distribution of x bar, which is going to be what's going to have less variation than the population distribution. All right, so we have that. Now we can calculate our test statistic. We want to do in the numerator the sampling error. There's our x bar minus our hypothesized mean. And we're going to divide it by the standard deviation for sampling distribution of x bar, which is standard error. So there we have it. I'm going to control shift tilde. That is z. That's our test statistic. It tells us for our sample mean how many standard deviations above or below. So this one's above. So we're testing. Our original hypothesis was we thought that the mean salary for realtors was greater than 85,000. We get a sample. Here's the number of standard deviations above the assumed mu. Now we can calculate p-value. Now when we calculate p-value, we compare it directly to alpha. If p-value is less than alpha, then we reject the null hypothesis. All right, so for p-value, we use equals. And these are the norm.s. These are the standardized, normal, bell-shaped distributions. And we're going to use the dis to go from a z, comma, 1. We're going from a z to a probability. Now, that's from negative infinity up to our z, and that's not what we want. So we have to take 1 minus. That gives us our p-value. And what's the meaning of p-value? It means this test statistic. What's the probability of getting that test statistic or more? So there you can see the picture. There's the probability. That probability right there is smaller than our alpha. So we would reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative. Now, for the critical value method, we have to take our alpha. I want to use our standardized normal bell-shaped distribution functions. But we're going to use the inverse. The inverse, we take our alpha. And this will deliver a z, which is our marking point, our hurdle. Same thing. We gave it. 0 0.05, that doesn't work because these functions always go from negative infinity up to our point. So instead of putting 0.5 in, we want 1 minus. That gives us 95%. So up to there, that'll give us above. So it's 1.64 for critical value. That's the hurdle point right there. So if our test statistic is above, then we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative. That's one tail right on the upper. One tail left on the lower. We have 16 ounces of ketchup. And we have, oh, we'll control shift tilde to get rid of that formatting, which means we did a sample and, and got uh, bottles of ketchup less than the hypothesized mean. This is a test on the left, the lower end. We have to calculate our standard error. We're going to take our sigma divided by the square root of our n. Then we calculate our test statistic. We need our sampling error in the numerator divided by the standard deviation, minus 0 0.8. Our p-value, we are from negative infinity up to that point, so no problem. We can just throw in our z here. So we do norm.s dist. There's our z comma 1. The 1 says calculate the cumulative probability from negative infinity up to our z. So there it is, 0.21. We compare it directly to our alpha. Much, much, much bigger, so we fail to reject. Hey, uh, here's something odd that happened. Right there, you can't see all that. But if you scroll up and then back down, it magically appears. I wish they'd fix that. All right, critical value. 
Again, we have to, here's our critical value. That's the hurdle point. Anything below for a lower left test, any test statistic below, then we reject. We'll use our standard normal curves, our S's, right? Inverse goes from a probability to a Z. We're going to throw in our alpha, which will then will spit out our hurdle point. Now notice negative infinity up to that, so we just leave it 0.05. So that's minus 1.64. We can clearly see that our test statistic is not less than this, so we fail to reject. Our last example is two tail. Here's our little picture. This one's not so symmetric here. This is 16 ounces of ketchup, but the manufacturer wants to check if the filling machine is out of balance. We got a sample of 16.12. We still have to calculate our standard error. Our test statistic, particular x bar minus the hypothesized mu. That is our sampling error. And we divide it by the standard deviation to get how many standard deviations above or below. Now we use our test statistic either in the p-value method or critical value method. Now for p-value, if we take this 1.444, we know that p-value gives us the probability of getting 1.44 or more. It's a two-tail. So we're going to have to take that probability and double it. All right, so you ready? Equals, and this is on the upper end. So if we put in our 1.44 to give us a probability from here all the way up to that, so we need to 1 minus norm s dist. We have our z comma 1. Now, this will give us the probability on the upper end, but we need to double it. So I'm going to put parentheses around this and multiply it by 2. All right. Now, down here, I have notes for all the different types of tests, the two one-tails and the two-tail. This will be a uh, p-value up here. So another way to do this, norm.s dist. And I'm going to take the opposite. So this is on the upper end. Now this is going to force it to be on the lower end. Right? And so that gives us the same probability. And we simply multiply it by 2. All right, and so for the critical value, we're going to use our norm dot s inverse, but we're given an alpha what of point let's see point zero five. We're interested in dividing that in half on either end. So when we do our equals norm dot s inverse, we have to take the probability and divide it by two. Now this will give us our prob our critical value on the low end, our hurdle, right? And so to get it on the upper end, I'm just going to say minus this. Now notice I didn't type an equal sign, control enter. You type that minus, it'll automatically put the equal sign in. All right, and then you can clearly see our test statistic 1.44 is between these two, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so that's a summary. Six examples, a p-value and a critical value test statistic calculation for each one of our tailed tests. All right, now coming up in the next few videos, we'll be talking about what to do if we don't have sigma, our standard deviation for the population, and we'll see how to use the t functions. All right, see you next video.